Hey guys, how you doing out there? Um, just wanted to personally invite you all out this Saturday at Calvary Chapel Pico Rivera, uh, 10 a.m. to the next Look Up End Times update. Uh, there's a lot of things to cover. So many things going on in our world today. This world that we live in is getting crazy, and we see evidence of that big time in our country. And uh, it made me think of some scriptures. In, in Mark 13, it says that Jesus went out of the temple and one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? So they were looking at their temple which was a magnificent structure, uh, the way it was built, a lot of money poured into it. It was what they loved um, about being there in Jerusalem and just having that temple right there that seemed indestructible. And they're telling Jesus, look at how finely made this temple is. Look at this beautiful, strong structure. And Jesus says, do you see this great building? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Very interesting that Jesus would tell them, look at this great structure that seems indestructible, but I'm telling you now it's going to be destroyed. And that probably shook them to the core of their heart. Maybe something even that was difficult to believe that the very thing that they thought could never be taken down. Not by any human means. What Jesus is saying that would be destroyed. And I really kind of symbolically look at our own country. You know, as a kid, as a patriot, as one who loved his country singing the songs in elementary school you know the the different songs that we sang you know god bless america land that i love stand beside her and guide her you know those those songs that you just made you have a real love for your country and then to think about our powerful military. You know, have you ever been on a military base and you see these planes that are huge? And you've been maybe on a naval base and you see these big ships. And you know about the technology that we have and the fighting spirit of our troops. And the way that we have, you know, bases all over the world. We flex our military muscle uh all over the world and it's been that way my whole life so we've always felt like we were indestructible no other country can come in and invade us no one can take us down we take the fight to you you'll never take the fight to us and if you had told me even 10 15 years ago that our country would be destroyed i would have a hard time believing that a i wouldn't want to hear it and B, it wouldn't seem possible. But the days that we live in today, and according to the Bible, the Bible does not talk about the United States of America in end times Bible prophecy. If we at all are mentioned, if we at all are mentioned, and some might say, well, we're Mystery Babylon, I think we could be possibly tied into mystery of Babylon especially you see the agenda and the narrative and the undercurrent of the things that are going on in our country and the, the agenda that's being pushed I think that could be tied into mystery Babylon but America if anything the young lions um, at best protest at best they protest um when Ezekiel 38 talks about these countries, Russia and Iran and Turkey, 
moving on into Israel and invading Israel. So that peace agreement that went down between the UAE and Israel is part of what's lining up Bible prophecy right before our eyes. And a country that was once an enemy of Israel is now a friend of Israel and has peace with Israel. Countries that at one time had peace with Israel, like Iran and like Turkey, now have, they are now enemies of Israel. Then you see Russia, who's pretending to be a friend. I say pretending because it seems like they have a friendly relationship um, between Putin and Netanyahu. However, I believe Russia knows what they're doing. They're there in Syria, as well as Iran and Turkey, and and. And things are starting to get a little shaky up there in Syria. There's been bombings in and around Damascus. And I believe that we'll be waking up one day to hearing that Damascus is fully and completely destroyed. As the Bible says so in Isaiah 17. So all that kind of stuff ties in. But I think the reason why Russia and Iran and Turkey ain't really kicking up real dust yet. They're in Syria. And going into to Israel because they're waiting to see what happens with our country. Uh, I believe Russia, Iran, Turkey. Turkey's really on the move. If you're paying attention to headlines, they, they it almost seems like they're on their own program. And including China, China, I believe, wants to see the United States go down. And they are laughing at what's going on in our country. Nobody needs to attack us. We have such division in our country right now. There is so much hatred in our country right now. And and this this is this is dividing not only the people in the, in our country, it's dividing the church. Many people in the church do not agree on things. There's a division going on in the church. There's a division definitely in in our politics it's far left and far right now there's not really much middle ground and i believe the devil is playing both sides the enemies he knows how to work it he knows how to work it and you know part of me you know though i'm conservative and uh would vote that way you know I don't fully know if I fully trust Donald Trump and his agenda as well. He's pushing for the vaccine, which I know he has to, but I believe this vaccine is no good. They're trying to clear hurdles. It's all about the election. It's all about politics. It's all about trying to gain power for both sides. And I don't care who really wins this election. I believe you're going to have turmoil in our country regardless of who wins there's going to be civil unrest all throughout our country regardless of who wins so no matter what you know we st- i as a christian we're going to vote morals we're going to vote on the candidate that best aligns his policies on what the bible says and what the scriptures say and what we believe as christians That's the way you got to vote. That's the way you can stand before God and say you give an account for the decisions you make and the things that you do and the choices uh, that you live out. But here's the thing. No matter what, who's in office, it seems like abortions are going to still continue to happen. It still seems like gay marriage is going to continue to happen. Whether or not we back Israel, we'll see how that goes. Um, But we need to really be on guard and not get caught up in this political warfare that's going on. This warfare is even dividing families. Families can't talk to each other uh, about politics because it'll end up in a fight for many of them. Most people don't do their full research. And if you do, if you are one who's done your research and has given time and effort to looking up things and not just taking what the mainstream media says but really looking up different articles and listening to podcasts and doing research on your own 
You can speak the truth on matters and not everybody wants to hear it. The Bible talks about in the last days, people are not going to love the truth. And so no matter what, whether you bring the truth or not, uh, I believe our country is so divided right now. And I don't think we're at a place we'll ever get back to where we should be or we need to be as a country. We are no longer the United States of America. I believe we are the divided states of America. What can turn this around? It would have to start with the church. It would have to start with the church in the United States of America saying we need to pray and we need to fast. That's what we see in the Bible, praying and fasting can cause the judgment of God to be delayed or even stopped. But I haven't heard that kind of message from the church. And I believe Satan knows what he's doing. I believe there is a, a, a subtle persecution that has begun. And Satan has got our eyes off of Jesus. And, and we might be saying Jesus and preaching Jesus. But are we really seeking Jesus and causing us to put up a shield and pull out our sword and thinking that we're going to put up a fight. Some Christians believe their fight is by showing up to church on a Sunday. And I really want to encourage you. Sundays, Wednesdays, uh, as often as you can, our campus is open. You make it to church. If your church is open, it's a Bible teaching church that teaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. That teaches the full counsel of God. Be in that church. Go to church. Attend church. You need the church. The church needs you. We need to minister to one another. To do as the Bible says. To, to come together even so much as we see the day approaching. Um, the Bible tells us to do that. The day is approaching. It's, it's almost here. Jesus is almost here to, to return. We need to be in the church. But I believe the church is kind of has their eyes off of what God's really called us to do right now. I believe we think that we need to fight the persecution instead of really praying and fasting on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our president, on behalf of our leaders, on behalf of our election, on behalf of our policies, on behalf of all the rioting and the looting and the, the racial tension and the deception that's going on. We need to be, and I don't hear anybody really doing this on their knees or on their face, repenting before God. Even if you're not guilty of those sins, you see a, a real true heart uh, of, of repentance. You repent for sins that are not even your own. You'll ask God to forgive us for our sins because you're praying on behalf of our country. And I don't see that happening. And I don't think that we're going to turn it around. I believe these are the last days of the United States as we know it. Our country is changing radically. It doesn't seem to be matter who's in office. I believe these things will only accelerate as we draw near to the election and even past that. Changes are coming, guys. And we need to be aware of what's going on, not only here, but in the Middle East. A lot is going on in the Middle East right now. And we need to be looking at our scriptures, looking at the headlines, and looking for Jesus Christ. Because that trumpet can blow at any time. And if you're not, if you're not right with Jesus Christ, if you are not, have never repented of your sins and accepted the payment that Jesus made by his blood and giving of his life on that cross, then you need to get right and you need to repent and to confess your sins before the Lord and receive the salvation that Jesus offers you. And this is a lifestyle of repentance because we all fall short of the glory of God. We need to be praying for our country, praying for our leaders. We need to be praying. If you're a believer, man, we need to be sharing the gospel right now. Share your faith with your family members, with your friends, with your co-workers, every and er anywhere and everywhere you are, because Jesus is coming soon. So you guys, I want to invite you again to the Look Up End Times Bible Study this Saturday, 10 a.m., Calvary Pico Rivera, where we'll be talking about all these things much more in depth. I'll be taking your questions. I uh, hope to see you there. God bless you, and see you soon.